Good morning. Good Tuesday morning. I think I'm going to do a little woodworking project today. Several weeks ago, I picked up this compound miter saw. Now I've already got a compound miter, I mean I already got a, a chop saw, but it's not a compound miter. I paid 10 bucks for this. Somebody, the guy told me that it was a Harbor Freight, but I don't think it is. Um, carbide tip blade. So we're going to use it. Now, there's sawdust here, but that's not for me. I have not, other than seeing if the motor works, I have not cut any wood with it. So whatever sawdust is here is from the previous owner. And uh, I never had a compound miter saw before. And I only, pay, like I say, I paid 10 bucks for this. The one I used to use and still have is over here. This is my Ryobi that I paid 20 bucks for uh, six or seven years ago at a yard sale. It works very well, but it's not compound miter, but it works very well. So we're gonna try out the uh, newer one. And what I wanna make is uh, some custom made little shelves in my electronic shop. And I wanna show you what I wanna do. Okay, here's what I wanna do. In these spaces here, I can't get another one of these cabinets because they're, you know, they, I don't think they make a tall, skinny cabinet. So what I wanna do is to make a framework with a few shelves in them so I can set these things on them. So I gotta do some measurement and see where I gotta put the shelves. So I'm gonna make one here. The back, this is insulation here, so there's not gonna be any wooden back. It's only gonna be top, bottom, and sides. And it'll be screwed to this two by four. And it'll wedge right up against this cabinet. I'll push this way over and you know I'll take careful measurements. And over here the same way. So these cleaners here, uh, like the deoxid and uh, uh, CRC cleaner, um, I'll make a, a thing to go into here and then have a shelf here and maybe one here so I can put small items in. You know, in this here shop, I need to utilize every single little nook and cranny I can uh, get because this here is all wasted space right here. You know, uh, I can put stuff here. So maybe I'll just have like one shelf here if I decide to have the chemicals here. I may have the chemicals here either way. So I got to get started on this and hopefully I have some 3 8 plywood uh, no thicker than half inch because I, you know, I want to get the uh, most room on the inside. I don't think I have any three quarter anyways. And it'll come out to about here. You know, only to put things on. It doesn't need to come out any more this way. And the same with this one. This can only come only needs to come out to here. So it'll be over to here like this. Uh, I won't do anything here because I don't want to bang my head when I'm sitting at the bench having anything sticking out over here. So I think if I come out over here I should be okay. So that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go looking for some wood now. And all my wood is stored underneath this shop here. So I'm going to get some wood out. I This this keeps the skunks out and the raccoons out. And don't keep the chipmunks or the mice of course. And that's basically why I made these lattice panels here. Okay, this is where I store my uh, scraps of wood underneath the electronic shop here. Let's see. I even have cardboard I can kneel down on. Here's some quarter inch luon. That would that would be uh, that would make the sides. It doesn't have to be very uh, heavy, but the um, and shelves will have to be thicker plywood. The sides don't have to be, because it's going to be built and stuck into uh, 
is here yeah, so I can make shelves out of this. That's we have almost the right depth. I don't think this is perfectly cut. It's wider at that end than it is at this end, but let's see what we got under here. It's some more quarter-inch plywood. All right, so I'm going to search for some wood. We'll get back on this video in a minute here. It's half, half or three, um, three eighths. I'm not sure what. Okay. We'll come back on the video in a minute here. We want to get the materials together to see what I need. It's it's early. It's only not even 10:30 in the morning yet. It's supposed to be in the 60s today, uh, so it's a little more comfortable because it's been in the upper 70s. And although the humidity is low, it was a little warm in the sun. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use this, so maybe that's why I got it for 10 bucks. Um, it seems to be very hard to turn. Loosen this. Let me just pull this out here so I can get it. It's very hard to. It seems to be binding up here. All right, I took out this. Let's see if I can clean this out. I don't know if that's going to do any good, but we'll clean that out. And this is really, really hard to turn. There's probably wood in there, jammed in there and everything. Well, I can see why I got it for $10. It's some, something's jammed up in here. And I can't budge these Phillips screws at all. And I'm not going to risk stripping out the heads of them. I can't budge them. They're in there super tight. So the only thing I can do is to just spray WD-40 all around the rim here. And, uh... Because this thing here won't move. I have to literally bang it to get it to go. And that's that's probably why... I mean, I can take this off. I've already had this off. Uh... That's not a problem. It's just move it. this uh, a turntable here. It's got four of these uh, clamps on here, and I can't I can't move that. I can't budget. Can't budget. I could try the electric driver on it, but I'm afraid I'm going to strip the heads out on it. But then if I can't get this off, it ain't going to matter. You know, sometimes you buy something at a yard sale and you think you got a good deal and you don't, you know. But uh, obviously it's nothing in here. It's something under this turntable here. I'll put you on a tripod and uh, play around with this a little bit. I'll probably shoot some WD-40 all around the rim here. It's... Uh, Push this down. Very hard. Man, that's hard. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be that hard. Man, what a job. Let's turn it over here. We got you in camera. Do we have you in camera, huh? Let's see. All right. I'm using this three dollar tripod that I got. Ah. I can't move them screws. I think what I'm going to do is a WD-40 trick first. Get the camera back a little bit so we don't get some spray in case it's windy. Right, now, I'll probably get it more, be more effective if I get it on the top here. Make sure you can still see me here. All down in the edges. And we'll put it down in there. All right. 
good old WD-40. That's the way she should go. Beautiful. Put a little bit down in the gear, in the worm drive here. back on zero here because I want to put my plate back in but I'm going to wait down the face of this thing all right it looks like we're in business here uh, I haven't seen how I don't know how good the blade is on it this is a uh, uh, doesn't feel all that sharp but let's go we'll give a, a some sample cuts from some scrap wood and see how it does okay let's put this uh, plate back in here. I think that's the way it goes. Yep. It's a little awkward working, uh, you're working very close to this blade here. Well, uh, you got the blade guard of course, but you really can't, other than taking the blade out and moving the guard out of the way, I can do it, I guess. I'm right up against the blade guard, but I, I think I can get the screws in. I didn't think the WD-40 would really work that good. Got to probably do the same thing to the uh, the old Ryobi that I got. Because that gets a little hard to turn too. So check and see if this camera is still recording. get you back far enough so I don't get the camera messed up here. I got an old scrap piece of wood here. You see how it cuts here? So Say so. Not sure what kind of blade that is, but it looks like a rough cut blade. But I'm not doing furniture work anyway, so. All right, let's try it. So, plug her in here. got a seven inch wide board here but you won't quite cut it the full seven inches okay, that's not bad. now we're going into the shop to see if this is uh, the right length it's very hard for me to measure in that corner there uh,
know, maybe this is why they got rid of it. It don't seem to be cutting. But it's locked in here. Here's the thing, there's a notch right there. It drops right in. As close as I can see that with my bad eyesight. It's a little off zero, but it locks in. I mean, that's the where it's got to go. And these don't seem to be adjustable here. I don't think these are adjustable. I'm getting the same error on both of them. I'm even out here, and I'm in over here. I'm not getting I'm not getting good cuts on this. The old saw did a lot better. I'm not getting good cuts at all. And I'm getting these little tails on here. It just did such a job getting that tra table saw out of the shed. I avoid it because I got so much junk in there, I can't get at it. Take me half the day to get it. So I don't know how I'm gonna how I'm gonna compensate for that. It drops into the groove. See, it has a, it has little notches. See, right here. You know. It seems to be off a little bit on this part. I don't know. Take this off and see what... See what it entails here. I don't know if there's any adjustment on that or not. That, that thing's off. When I got it, these bolts were loose. Huh. I gotta clean this up. It's got all WD-40 all over everything. And I mean, just they just go into these. Here, these, these don't seem to be adjustable, so if there is an adjustment, it's got to be here. This thing does have a tiny bit of play in it. But not really that much. Let me clean that off. I don't know. Bolts just seem to just go in the hole and and that's it. Now I didn't tighten them up yet. Now I hold it up here, which is on the zero mark. They can see why I got this for ten bucks. It's way off. Now let's snug these up. And flip it over. Nothing I can do about it, it's off. It drops into the zero groove. It's right on the zero line here, the red line. It's way off. It's way off. 
Why? Maybe this thing. There's big Allen wrench uh, screws on this. Why would this get out of whack? It's way out of whack. I don't have a... All I only have is this thing to check it with. It's flush on this end of the red uh, thing in the middle here, the plastic. But it's way off here. It's off. See, she's right up against there, and she's off here. What the hell else could it be? I don't think this is adjustable. There's uh, two big Allen's here. I'd have to find my Allen wrench. There's another two big ones here. But this wouldn't. Be, this would never get out of place. This is tight. It, you know. But that would seem like the only. thing that could be out. I don't know, but I'm not going to be able to do a very good job. This thing's way out of whack. Now up against this, the blade is down. Now if I'm flush against the blade, I'm out over here. I'm up against the blade here, and I'm a fraction of an inch off the blade here. Now, I can't see how this thing could be out of whack, because this is flush here, right in here. This is flush. I can, I can feel just a tiny bit of this lower part here versus this. But if I go on this side, I feel the same thing right here. So this couldn't have been moved. Well, I don't know where my big Allens are. They're in the shed somewhere. Take me half the day to find them. I guess I'll have to put this away and use the Ryobi. I got to get this project uh, started. I got the. I just don't know why this thing is cutting like this. You know, I don't know. The Ryobi didn't do that. This cuts from here to here, but it leaves these little leaves these little tails on there. Now I can understand leaving a tail on this end because the blade isn't wide and big enough to cut all the way through. I can cut cut down and I can end up here. Then I flip it and do it that way. That's fine. But why am I getting the tail on the leading edge? That don't make sense. I think we're going to get the Ryobi out and put this away because I I need to I need to get uh, good work on this and I can't do it with this thing. All right, I got the Ryobi out, you know, that's the same setup here with the things, but I still can't see how these things can move. Uh, anyways, this cuts a straight, this cuts a proper, well, I can't get it because this thing's in the way, but uh, this is, this is definitely, um, this definitely cut square, is what I wanted to say. So now I gotta, I gotta trim this crap off that the other saw did. So I'll play around with that other one. Maybe the, uh, on the uh, on the tradesman, maybe that has to be adjusted a little. I still can't see how it could have got out of whack because it was secured down just as tight as this one is. All right, uh, let's get uh, let's get trimming up on these things here. Um, I'm making a top and bottom and a middle shelf, but I got to go and see if I need a second middle shelf. Now the Ryobi does a lot better. It doesn't leave these little tails at the leading edge like the other one did. When I cut down, 
both saws of course the blade isn't big enough and when I cut down I cut nice and straight here and then it leaves a little part that I have to flip over and cut that's fine but the other saw would leave a little tail here which it shouldn't besides this tail here which it should because the blade doesn't you know the blade isn't big enough to cut this seven inch wide piece right here it's actually an eighth inch less than seven inches so don't ask me to figure that out I just say less than seven inches by one eighth well anyways this this does a good cut so I got I'm gonna go in the shop now and see if I need a top and bottom in the middle or do I need two middle shelves well this is it nothing fancy no back because uh, the insulation is in the back and it's going to slip between the 2x4 stud and the green drawer cabinet and I'm going to have to figure a way to uh, nail this on here and glue it because I can't swing the hammer from here I probably have to put a screw in there and do it by hand uh, there's a block that's going to go on the side of this where this line is is the uh, 2x4 where it recesses and flushes up against the 2x4 and this block here will be glued and screwed to this and there'll be a hole in here and there'll be a screw holding this so this will hold it right up against the 2x4 so it'll keep it from falling out of there so what a difference from using this and the other saw I can get some straight cuts so I gotta take a break here for a minute and I'll be right back all right I got that block in there and a hell of a job getting that in there I'd use an offset screwdriver and it's not easy uh, if I didn't have this shelf in here I could have drilled up and hit the 2x4 but the 2x4 with the insulation only comes up to here so I can't get my drill in here to, to mount that so that's why this block is here now what I got to do is drill a hole to here so I can put a screw in before I do that I want to test fit this in place all right um, she sits level here well not perfectly but you know things aren't exactly straight here I want to flush up against the insulation here so that's what this is for here see how that block is so I drill a hole here and that'll just hold that right up like that I mean unfortunately it's gonna have a space down here but it's no big deal this way I can put stuff like this here up in there and I gotta make one for here too but we're not gonna be doing that on camera I have to look for some more quarter-inch uh, Luan I don't think I have any more because the thicker I make these sides the less space I got in here and this is uh, this is half inch plywood here and it's kind of warped I cut it off of a long piece <clears throat> but you can see I wouldn't be able to drill up in here and put a screw here which would be the best way to do it um, because of this shelf here I would have to have a very long bit but the problem would be I'd have, I have to pre-drill I cannot start a screw without pre-drilling it'll slide all over the place and bend over sideways and everything else so in order for me to pre-drill I would have to I wouldn't be able to do it with this shelf here there's only like um, five inches from here to here so let me get that into place here there's nothing special about it it just utilizes this space here because before all I had is just this little shelf and all this was wasted space here so with this it gives me some more storage space and I don't want to just stick it in there it ain't gonna probably fall out but I don't like things that are like that I like things secured and it can be removed in the future because it's only going to have one screw holding it here like that well I found some quarter inch uh, press board it's good enough for it's good enough for what I'm going to be using uh, I'm going to make the other one now for the uh, the contact cleaner 
and uh, anything else that I can stick on uh, one or two shelves above that. So it's going to be similar to the first one uh, that I made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all this and then I'll show you after it's all together and up in, in place. Well, here's the second one pretty much put together. I just have to cut a little piece for the base. Uh, just make it sit level. And uh, the particle board, I use all these these little small brads. I have some smaller ones in there, uh, like these here, because uh, that's only quarter inch. It's like a press board, and the plywood shelves are only a half inch, so it's a little difficult nailing. But I got it in and uh, glued also. So now what I have to do is um, cut off a little piece off of that. And then, all right, I'm going to carry it in. It's nothing fancy. You're not going to paint it or anything like that. I carried it into the into the shop here. A nice day today. A little breezy, but real nice. So, uh, oh. okay, I put a little board down here. That's what that piece was that I showed you. So we get that up in there. All right, that piece of wood kind of like levels it off here because this shelf is nailed here. So I just wedged a little piece underneath here. And now uh, my tallest can is the CRC. So I allowed about another inch to put something else in there. Now that's pretty solid. I won't need to put one of these blocks in like I did here. Because that's pretty well wedged in there. And uh, I can always wedge a little piece of something in here between this and this if need be. But she's pretty solid and it isn't really going to fall out of there. And the back wall is insulation, of course. I have to get the, this coating thing out of here from Sal's. Uh, the problem is removing anything, it takes my insulation uh, off here the uh, aluminum but I I need to take this out of there because it's going to get covered up with stuff that's going up in there so so now now I got space here storage space which before all I could do is just put things on this and and nothing up here so when you're in tight quarters like this you want to be able to utilize every bit of space. Well, that's it for the video. Uh, I'm going to finish up here. I might, I might drive a nail in here just to keep it steady um, if I can. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. It's not going anywhere. And that's it. Uh, I don't know how much uh, editing I'm going to have to do on this video, but anyways, i got to get the sh shop back stuff back on the shelves again because it's getting disorganized so thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed this project such as it was